Hi, it's Dave from Megapoints Controllers. In this video, we're going to look at the patch to the System 2 Servo 8 driver and see what's in it for you. I encourage you to go online and take the update. Uh, it fixes a few things and um, adds some new functionality that may be of interest to you. So let's take a, a look at what's actually involved. So in the first instance, we will go to the uh, shop and look at the System 2 products. And if we click on the servo driver, you will see on that page, along with all the documentation, uh, a new uh, link, which is the software update and patch notes. So we can see version four, which was released on the 28th of February. Um, the headline is that it contains now a JMRI compatibility. So you can take the servo driver and operate it with JMRI. Um, it's using the MQTT protocol, which I will go into in some detail in another video. Uh, essentially, it, um, it communicates with JMRI uh, wirelessly through the Wi-Fi interface that's built in. Um, there are two protocols. There's the native protocol, which is Megapoints controller to Megapoints panel and so on. So they all communicate with each other. Or you can set the JMRI protocol, which gives you this compatibility with the JMRI uh, suite. Um, if you're running the MQTT, you should disconnect the CAM network cables so that we don't get any uh, conflicts. And uh, it's tested against JMRI 5.2. We've also added uh, an imp improvement to the network discovery, so, or to the board discovery, should I say. So um, when another board appears on the network, in addition to the usual information, you now get the name of the device survey dash whatever the location if the location field's been filled in and also the ip address and you can click on the device name and the ip address to go to the management uh, interface there's also been some improvements to the wi-fi connection persistence so it, it tries harder and does a few things if it if it fails to connect uh, basically it's all all part of uh, improving reliability um, we've also made some uh, improvements to the range check fields, which I'll show you in a second. So let's uh, lose this screen and see what's on the Servo 8. So if you're running version 3 of the software, then you'll see this message if you're connected to the internet. And it uh, is telling us there's a firmware update available and that's the release date. So head on over to the update firmware link. And there it is, it's showing us um, what the, what's in this release, which is a rinse and repeat of what you just read. So click here and start the download. And this will take about eight minutes to complete. So that's the software update process complete. So I'll click here and go to the main menu. And what you'll see is that message about the firmware has changed. It's now telling you it's up to date and the version or release date of that uh, update. And it's running version four software and templates. So here's the panel driver connected to the servo driver. The protocol remains at CAN. So when I press a button, we can see servos are moving. Now you might notice on the screen now we have this yellow background here and this is showing which side of the motion or the arm or which side of the arc the servo is on. So it's on the left hand side or the right hand side. And this is designed to tell you which of the range adjusters will give you immediate feedback. So if it's on the right hand side as it is here, then when I move this range slider you can see the servo moving in real time because it's on the right hand side of that movement. And if I move it to the other side, now the lower range or the left hand side will produce a movement on the servo. If I move the opposite one where the servo arm is not, then it won't produce any movement and you can just flick it and it'll move. Any that don't show yellow just haven't been moved. So once they've been operated, 
you'll see the yellow um, background appear and it'll move with the servo. One of the other improvements we've made are to the, the locate board. So if I ask it to tell me which boards it sees on the network, then at the moment it's showing the panel controller, the CAN ID, and the device address, the IP address, which we're currently connected to on our network. So what I'm going to do now, and this requires the corresponding update for the panel controller, which is due to be released, is I'll take the panel controller and I will connect just a power cable to it. So now I've undone the CAN network and I've just connected it to 12 volts and I'll do the same for the servo driver. I'll connect it to 12 volts. So now I have the two boards connected again. If I refresh or reload this page, it's reloaded but there's no longer any communication because the CAN bus is not wired. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell it to set the protocol to native. I'm getting all these warning messages because I haven't configured something. So I'll put my broker in, uh, which is the name of the host, zm3.luli.home, save changes and restart. And I'll do the same thing for the um, for the uh, panel controller. So I'll set to native. Oh, this is already configured. Save changes and restart. So if we look at this now, it's reported the uh, panel controller on the announcement message. Before on the CAN you had a report message. Now it says announce when it gets it over the Wi-Fi. It gives you the name of the device, the IP address, the type software revision, and the location, it says desk. And if you look, that is the location string that you've entered here. And what it does is it shows a, a portion of that, the first 12 characters, I think. So they're both now communicating wirelessly uh, because the CAN bus is disconnected. So if it's on native mode, it'll work just the same as on the CAN bus, except you don't have a network wire. With this patch, we've activated the Wi-Fi facility on the board and it's communicating through this broker. And I will do a, de a separate video demonstrating how to install uh, a broker so that you can, you can have all these communicating. What happens is the broker is the focal point. Each board talks to the broker and the broker distributes the messages around the network. And the reason we use a broker is because it offers immense scaling. Uh, other protocols tend not to offer scalability. This lets you go into the thousands of boards. It's absolutely vast, should you ever want to. Here I have just two. In fact, if I clear the page and I do a locate board, you can see it's given me the, uh, the announcement message again and it's um, told me where this board is and it is a panel controller and it's basically reporting all the boards except itself. Now with the System 2 servo driver, um, I'm going to place it into JMRI mode. So we no longer need this panel because we're going to be delegating the control authority to JMRI itself. So if we go back to the screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the protocol from native to JMRI, if you keep pressing it, it goes CAN native JMRI and it tells you. And when you've selected the protocol you want, in this case, JMRI, save and reboot. And then it will restart the, um, the board and it'll be speaking in the language JMRI expects. So we've restarted the board, it's in JMRI mode and, and I've connected it to the broker. And this will be different from your location to mine. Mine is called ZM3 on my home network, luli.home. I will go over configuring the broker in a separate video. So let's start JMRI. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the tools, tables, and I'm going to go to turnouts. So I've got nothing configured. I'm sorry for the small font size. It's 
I have a high-res screen, it's 4K, and uh, these, these seem tiny. So I'm going to go to turn out, so I'm going to go add, bring this box down here, and I'm going to select the system connection, which is MQTT, and I'm going to do a hardware address of one. That matches the V port here. So I start on V port one, I finish on V port eight. So I'll add a sequential range and I want eight of them. Eight, create. And here we have eight turnouts. So if I click the closed button, did you see the servo move? It's now gone to thrown and back to closed. So now JMRI is fully controlling that servo. So at this point, my PC or my PC software is fully controlling the servo driver. Now, I've added servos uh, or V ports for the points in uh, the range of one to eight there. But if I was to set one to uh, 99, then obviously uh, I'd need to add a, another servo. So I'll just go here and I'll set it this time to address 99 to match the V port and create. And now I have a, a, a point at 99. And there it goes. And back again. I'll delete that. And I'll put that back to eight. So you can see very quickly, I've got a connection to JMRI going. This isn't a Panel Pro demonstration. I will cover that on the more detailed version of setting it up but it just shows you how quickly you can get uh, something going. Let's create some entries to read the V port. Add, and this time I will start at address 161, which is this address here, and we'll add eight of them. And this is a state unknown until I throw the points, at which point it's now closed and thrown. So it's now reading the state from the feedback V port. In fact, we can turn these off, which will reduce the uh, overhead on the servo driver. So now when we throw them, we'll get nice smooth movement and the state is being read. Let's do the last one, number eight, which is thrown and back. So in the space of a couple of minutes, we've got eight servos being commanded by JMRI, and we've got eight servo V ports being read to read the status. So I hope you found that video useful on patch four for the system two servo driver. I'll do a separate video covering the detail of JMRI the how to read track sensors and also uh, configuring the MQTT broker. So keep an eye out for those. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.